So I would like to uh, introduce you the Microsoft LifeShare uh, SDK, the Teams LifeShare SDK, and something I really enjoy playing with. So I, I spent a bit of time during last of December hacking because it was quiet in the US because of the uh, holidays. And I wanted to play with this SDK for a long time because it's being announced at Build. Um, so normally I'm working on the Teams toolkit. So I don't know if you're aware of this uh, extension for VS Code or Visual Studio to let you build application for Teams and also have more than Teams now for Outlook and Office.com to in a very easy way. So if you've got questions, feedback, feel free to contact me also. But today, uh, let's deep dive in, in a little bit into uh, what you can do with um, the Team Life Share SDK. So it's being announced at Build uh, in preview by Satya during the keynote. If it's in preview, it means that you uh, enable it. You need to uh, enable the developer mode of Teams to be to be able to have access to that. Um, what you've got in the box is something really interesting to build collaborative experience inside a meeting like this one. So I, I'm going to try to load the experience at the end, but it will be a test because it will only work with people having uh, the developer preview uh, mode enabled in Teams um, and, and I've never tested on so much, with so much people. So before I will do some local tests with you. But what you can do is really have, have access to an infrastructure being provided by Teams, which means that it's going to be secure and compliance by default. So you don't have any backend to manage. It's going to use the Fluid Framework. So if you don't know the Fluid Framework, it's kind of an abstraction on top of WebSocket to do real-time communication on the web. And this is, for instance, something used in the loop component. So maybe you already use some loop component when in real time you can uh, live edit with other colleagues, you know, a, a, a part of uh, of your component somewhere in Teams, Outlook, or uh, anywhere. So it's using Socket for that. So it's it's using this fluid framework and add another abstraction layer dedicated for Teams. So it means that you will have access to uh, the context of Teams, for instance, and it's very low friction development because I'm not a huge backend developer. I I, I prefer spending my time on 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 the front end, um, and I've been writing you know a 3D engine in the past named Babylon JS. That's why I, I'm a huge lover of front-end development, and this was a perfect fit for me. Like the LiveShare SDK was taking care of the backend, the socket, the secure and compliance stuff is going to be scalable, and I just have to focus on the client code. So it also provides other type of uh, service, like you can see in the screenshot, you have like a kind of a surface, a specific canvas to, to draw on it in a collaborative way, like you can see on the screenshot with a picture of the various uh, uh, people participating to that. So this is what you've got in a nutshell for um, LifeShare SDK. It's really a SDK for you working on the client side, but it's going to take care of all the complexity of the backend to get the, the states uh, syn synchronized. So, it's low friction dev because you have a SDK either for uh, JavaScript or, or TypeScript. It's very fast to be integrated. The, the solution I'm going to demonstrate you, I was able to build it in two, three days, and mainly it was because I was discovering the platform, reading the doc, reading the samples, trying to understand really how it was working. The great news is, once again, the backend is managed by Teams, and by default, you have access to a free Azure Fluid uh, uh, relay uh, when it, you're running inside Teams, uh, and then you have a local browser testing, which is super convenient. We're going to see that together when you're spending your time uh, testing on your local machine. So, explain what it does, but before that, I'm going to start the experience to explain you what I had in mind uh, using this uh, specific new SDK. Uh, once again, using sockets in a way for, for doing uh, real-time uh, communication. So you see that it's going to open the, my browser. So it's going to now uh, load the 3D scene, uh, which is using uh, Babylon JS, which is a, an end 3D engine uh, I've been co-writing with a friend of mine, and now is being the official 3D engine of Microsoft. I can move inside the, the scene, as you can see. And now I can, uh, for instance, load another session to simulate another user. And I'm going to uh, split that in two. And you see that now um, I've, I'm, I'm able to see the update position of my uh, new user. Uh, I've got a fake name and a fake uh, avatar on top of it. I, and I can move where I want inside the apartment. Uh, and on the other side, I can follow my friend. And you see, I, 
uh, we're going to be in a team's meeting, so we're going to be able to discuss and I will be able to see, for instance, that Rock Main 31 is looking at a specific part of the kitchen. So maybe if I'm like the reseller of, a, of an apart of his apartment, I can ask to my customer, ah, are you currently looking at this part of the kitchen? Do you have specific question? Are you worried about that? And you see, you can already have this kind of collaboration experience together. Um, we are also I'm also supporting um, various type of things. So if I'm changing, for instance, the, the, the scene from this apartment to a museum, I'm moving here, really working for now inside my, my local machine. You know, it's a, an, a simulator environment that's being provided by the SDK. And of course, if I like now to put that inside Teams, I need to package that as a Teams app. So if you don't know uh, how it works, the Teams app is a web app, but with a specific manifest. In this manifest, you're going to discuss permission you like to have access to. In this case, I need to have specific uh, um, before trying at, at, the, at, the, at the end of this session, the experience in this uh, current uh, meeting, uh, I've deployed it on my own tenant. So it should be uh, visible. Um, there, so I'm going to close this one. So I'm currently using my uh, dev tenant. So it's like Teams inside Teams, like it's a meta Teams, which uh, is uh, right in, into the topic of this metaverse. And you see that I have this um, new button. So the way to uh, install it is to go to Manage App, upload my custom package, and then I have this new metaverse app. museum, but I've got other one available. And I've got my Mac on my uh, left, like you can see, this is uh, the webcam of my Macintosh, uh, and another session also, another user connected there. I'm going to click Share to Stage, and uh, it's going to load the experience of my, on my machine, but also it's going to automatically load the experience on all uh, machine and all the people being connected. And this side, I've got the same experience inside Teams. You see that Adele, Adele is, I'm Adele too, so Adele is me, but on my Macintosh. So if I'm moving there, you can see that I user so i've tested on five or six users it's working well because it's using low latency network um, and available directly inside the uh, inside teams and i've got various uh, scenes available for instance i've got this one that can be fun to to test the concept is really let's try to visit together an environment and and potentially also we could add some drawing on top, it, on top of it to, for instance, say like, oh, this DeLorean need to be fixed. I see a specific issue there. You can really come on together what's, uh, what's currently going on. So let's go into the source code now to understand how it works. So uh, I took one of the samples uh, of the LifeShare SDK. You got great many uh, different samples. One of it is named Dice Roller, uh, which is a very simple sample that just show you how to update states between the various connected users. So I took this one as a starting base. Um, and the way it works is you have to obviously reference the specific SDK coming from uh, the live SDK. Um, you have this specific uh, namespace that is available to have the local testing, like we've been able to do at the beginning of the demonstration, and then other type of structure that you need to read the documentation to better understand how it works. Obviously, I'm building um, an app for a Teams meeting, so I'm using also the Teams GS, uh, GS SDK. And then I'm going to define the data structure I would like to use. In my case, I wanted to use the, the live presence after being, uh, being discussing with uh, someone from, from the team, which is uh, good enough in my case to support my scenario. So we, let's see that together. 
defining a couple of uh, variables. I've got uh, the local user an array on every uh, machines to maintain who are the current user being connected and who is going to leave also the session, because if you leave, I will be able to destroy the object to clean the 3D scene in a way, so be able to have this dynamic in and out uh, participation. And also when uh, we, we're going to start the experience, so really some code uh, taken from the, um, uh, the sample, I'm going to get access to the search parameter to, to find if there is a scene. So is it the museum, is it the apartment to prepare the type of content I would like to share. Then I'm going to check if I'm currently running inside Teams. If I'm not running inside Teams, it means that I'm running inside my local uh, simulator. And then I'm going to prepare some fake data to simulate fake user in this case. I'm going to initialize the um, Teams app context. I will have access to the context. So inside the context, I will have, for instance, access to the uh, nickname, the email address of the user. That could then be uh, convenient to do a call to the graph to have access, for instance, to the profile picture. So I haven't done that yet in the sample because I was lazy, but it would be then easy to uh, set up SSO and do a graph call to retrieve like the profile picture, thanks to that. And if we are not in Teams, so it means that we're currently uh, loading the experience locally on, my, on your machine, I'm creating a fake context and a fake user just for the testing. You know, I have those weird names at the beginning. So it's really this part, like either I am in production in a way or on my local machine. Same here, I'm using uh, one of the functions that was provided by um, by the poker sample, the agile poker, uh, poker sample to create random names. So I just took this JavaScript that's going to generate random number, random name, uh, and a render picture in my case. So, and if if I've got a real user, like I've just shown you before, I will have access directly to the user principal name. Now, the next part, you see that uh, I was able to have either the some content shared in my main stage, so it's named stage, <laughs> or I have the, um, the sidebar on the right, that's the uh, name content, and if the first time you also, um, no, it's config, and the first time you can run it, you have also another page you can customize. In my case, I only show, shown you the, the stage page, but you will be able to test uh, later on because I'm going to share the sample, uh, the other screen if you like to. And then the joint container is really the magic being done by the live share SDK, meaning that in this part, we're going to check, are we currently in Teams? If we are in Teams, we're going to ask to Teams to create all the infrastructure logic for us to create the connection to the server, to put in place the WebSocket infrastructure with one line of code, basically. Um, and if we are not in uh, Teams, like meaning we are currently on the local machine, it's going to create a, a kind of a simulator environment for us to be able to test that locally. So it's going to be transparent. And then once it's being done, we are creating our local client and we're going to try to join Specific, by specific, uh, providing a spe some specific container schema. In my case, it's this live uh, presence uh, object. I hope you're still there. Now that I've done that, it's very easy uh, to manage um, updates. So the updates, obviously, you have a lot of 3D code. So I'm creating the avatar body, which was, you know, the, my cone and my cube on top of it. So nothing very interesting. The label on top of my avatar. And the main code is there, update avatar position and rotation. So you've seen that I was able to rotate the cube to see where I was looking at. So the way I'm doing that is I will be uh, called by a, a specific event that is there. My This is object is coming from the live share SDK. And it's going to say like, when you're going to receive a new event, like something has changed, first I'm going to check that I'm not the local, you know, uh, this is not me that is sending the update. I'm not interested in to update. I'm sending myself. If it's coming from, if it's a new user, I'm going to add this user into my collection and I'm going to create a local local object in my 3D scene for that. And I'm going to store that. Otherwise, if it's already there in my scene, it means that I need to move it in my scene. So I'm going to call this specific function. And this specific function, what it does, it's basically going to do an animation from one position to another one. And I'm going to comp compensate also the 
potential missing frame by doing some uh, uh, interpolation of the various. Uh, I'm not going to send every 60 milliseconds a new update, but every 100 milliseconds. So I need to compute the intermediate uh, states. So you see, outside of the Babylon JS code and 3D code, I only needed to use the presence on object. And also, obviously, I need to initialize this object at the beginning. And then the live share SDK really is going to manage for me the various updates. So let me summarize. I had to create the joint container with a specific schema. Then I have access to an object named live presence. And on this object, what I just need to do is to initialize it. It will be my local user. And I will have an event saying like, OK, something has changed, like a new user joined or a, a user decided to, to leave the session. I have an event, and then I need to do my update logics. And then it's going to provide me the data that has, that has changed uh, between uh, all sessions. And the way I'm going to update my position when I'm moving um, my camera, it's over there. This specific Babylon JS function this time is being sent every time we've moved or position or we've done a rotation change. So I know that if I move inside the scene, I need to say to the live share SDK, okay, something I've just changed my my position, but I'm using the update presence in this case of the SDK. And I'm going to say like I'm still online, but this is my new position, my new rotation, and this is my the picture I would like to use to display it in the other machine 3D rendering. So pretty simple code. Uh, you will be able to have access to it on my repo. Um, before trying to do that live uh, with you, maybe we'll be a lucky. Um, you need to start with, if you need to start with live share, you need to update your manifest like we've seen. You need to add the uh, specific, you know, uh, uh, package from uh, the live share SDK for your JavaScript or TypeScript application. Initialize the uh, SDK, define the, uh, the object you like to have in your schema. And then you, once you join, you need to use uh, the right object and, and just send the event to say like, this is a new state and do whatever you like to do uh, with it. The sample will be available on my GitHub just after the call on github.com slash Dave Roos and uh, Metaverse Live Share. So I will uh, communicate that on my uh, social network. And if we've got time and if we would like to, to take some risk, uh, let's try to load the app. I have no guarantee it's going to work. This is interesting. I've got to crash the whole team. So let's see. <laughs> no, it let's shouldn't. See. We do crash have another demo, so <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't crash. But um, you see that I'm going to add uh, the the application uh, in this uh, Teams. So you see, normally you should see an, a new icon being available there. And if some of you got the Teams uh, developer preview enabled. Uh, you should be able to see um, something being shared uh, on your um, uh, on your screen. So first a black screen, and then you should see the Babylon JS logo. Um, so if you can share in the chat how many people have something loading. Oh, I see a couple of people loading. I never tried on on with so many people. So the way to move inside is with the mouse and the arrow keys. So I see a bunch of people connecting, and now I can see your uh, update position, and it stopped. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so you, we've been able to to show a bit of it for a couple of seconds, um, but it was what I wanted to show you. It was just a it was just a test, and I think we managed to uh, to see it for uh, a couple of seconds. So thanks a lot. You will have access to the sample. Uh, feel free to give feedback. Uh, the team is interesting into. Um, testing more the, um, the app. Uh, I'm going to remove the app to be sure that I'm not um, breaking the rest of the um, of the session. Excellent. I, I did scrap some screenshots from my screen. Uh, it was working for me, so we can actually put it in the video recording as well. So we can see Mimontanas is walking around on the on the room, so we can now all see. <laughs> This is actually really cool. So, not sure who is Mimontanes, but <laughs> this seems so to be working for some.
Excellent. Yep. Thank you, David. Really, really cool and really advanced scenario. Awesome, awesome stuff. So absolutely brilliant. Thank you.